He revolutionized three-point shooting in the NBA. Steph for the lead. And that's the greatest three-point shooter the game has ever seen. Curry, another long-distance shot. It's good, Steph. He made big guys look small. And brought an NBA championship to Golden State after four decades. He is the baby-faced assassin. No one saw him coming. Top colleges passed on him, but he went on to become an NBA legend. Over the past 50 years or so, the NBA MVP award has seen some unexpected winners from outside the usual college powerhouses. Some MVPs bypassed college altogether like LeBron James, Kevin Garnett, Kobe Bryant, Dirk Nowitzki, and Moses Malone. While some underdog MVPs weren't even scouted by the big colleges, Steve Nash, Carl Malone, David Robinson, Willis Reed, and Julius Irving all played for lesser programs. And then there's a certain Steph Curry, who brought a whole new meaning to the term underdog. Growing up with an NBA legend, Del Curry, as his dad, you'd think Steph had a golden ticket to basketball stardom. But no, his journey was anything but smooth sailing. Steph wasn't just low on the high school recruit list, he wasn't even on it. He was rated just three stars. Despite growing up watching his dad, Del Curry, nail three-pointers in the NBA, colleges didn't exactly roll out the red carpet for young Steph. Don't get it all wrong, Steph wasn't exactly a bad player at high school. He had good handles and could shoot, but he lacked one important feature, his physicality. You see, Steph was small, so small that schools felt he would be bullied on the court and weren't going to take that chance. Take Virginia Tech, for example, where his dad played. Steph dreamed of following in those footsteps, but the Hokies only offered him a walk-on spot for his freshman year. Imagine the frustration. And Duke? Coach Mike Krzyzewski didn't see the magic either. Even though Duke was Steph's top choice, Coach K and his crew only promised to maybe think about it. With big names in college basketball turning him down, Steph headed to Davidson College to play under coach Bob McKillop. It took McKillop just a few weeks of practice to realize what the rest of the country had missed. He saw Steph's incredible skill, hand-eye coordination, and basketball smarts. Steph could shoot the lights out and had this fierce yet humble attitude. McKillop knew he had struck gold, calling Steph a five-star player in disguise. Despite being far from Steph's ACC dreams, Davidson offered location, quality coaching, and lots of playing time. Steph signed with them in November 2005, committing during the in-home visit. McKillop built the program around Steph, starting him in his first college game against Eastern Michigan. He had eight turnovers in the first half, and Davidson was down by 16 points. Coach McKillop thought about benching him, but decided to stick with his prodigy. Steph ended up with 13 turnovers, but also scored 15 points, leading the Wildcats to a comeback win. The next night, Steph lit up Michigan for 32 points. Clearly, this kid didn't need to redshirt to compete at a high level. By the end of his freshman year, he was leading all freshmen in scoring with an average of over 21 points per game. Davidson finished 29-5 and made it to the NCAA tournament. Steph set a rookie record with 122 three-pointers during his freshman year, showing the doubters they had seriously underestimated him. But the real fun began his sophomore year. Davidson started the season 4-6, but they won 25 straight games. They went undefeated in the Southern Conference and earned a number 7 seed in the NCAA tournament. Steph led Davidson to within one game of the Final Four. They lost to Kansas, the eventual national champions, by just two points in the regional final, 59-57. That season, Steph averaged almost 26 points per game and became a national sensation. He was now America's golden boy. Despite considering going pro after his sophomore year, Steph returned to Davidson for his junior season to prove he could play point guard. He did just that, leading the nation in scoring with an average of over 28 points per game. After three stellar seasons in college, the kid who couldn't get a scholarship offer from any ACC school was the number seven pick in the 2009 NBA draft. On his father's 45th birthday, Steph was selected by the Golden State Warriors. And the rest, as they say, is history. Despite the Warriors already having Monta Ellis, coach Don Nelson loved using small lineups and warmed up to the idea of drafting Steph. Ellis, however, didn't think he could play together, claiming they were too small. But Steph proved his worth playing in 80 games, which included 77 starts in his rookie season, averaging over 17 points, four rebounds, and almost six assists, and two steals in over 36 minutes per game. Steph's second half of the season was phenomenal, putting him in the Rookie of the Year race. 
He was named Western Conference Rookie of the Month for January, March, and April, becoming the only Western Conference rookie to win the award three times. He finished as the runner-up for the NBA Rookie of the Year award. During his rookie season, Steph scored 30-plus points eight times, setting the most 30-point games by any rookie in 2009-10, and the most since LeBron James had 13 and Carmelo Anthony had 10 in 2003-04. Steph also had five 30-point 10 assist games, tying Michael Jordan for the second most 30-point 10 assist games by a rookie. He became just the sixth rookie in NBA history to post a 35-point, 10-assist, 10-rebound game with 36 points, 13 assists, and 10 rebounds against the Los Angeles Clippers in early February. In the Warriors' season finale against the Portland Trailblazers in mid-April, Steph recorded a then-career-high 42 points, 9 rebounds, and 8 assists, becoming the first rookie since Oscar Robertson in February 1961 to register at least those numbers in each category in the same game. Steph finished his rookie season with 166 three-pointers, the most ever by a rookie in NBA history. In the lockout-shortened 2011-12 season, Steph missed 40 games, including the last 26 games of the season due to an ankle injury. He underwent surgery for the second time in the space of a year, and he was being touted as an injury-prone player. He was almost traded to Milwaukee, but the Bucks' medical staff said that his ankle wouldn't hold up. Who knows what would have happened if that deal pulled through? Before the 2012-13 season, Steph signed a four-year, $44 million contract extension with the Warriors. Given his injury history, many thought it was a risky move, but Steph, along with Klay Thompson, who was signed a year earlier, soon became known as the Splash Brothers for their incredible shooting prowess. That season, Steph played in 78 games, averaging almost 23 points and 7 assists per game. He also set a new NBA single-season record with 272 three-pointers, breaking Ray Allen's previous mark, and he did it on 53 fewer attempts. In April, he was named Western Conference Player of the Month, averaging over 25 points, 8 assists, 4 rebounds, and 2.13 steals per game. He had standout performances, including a 54-point game against the Knicks, featuring a career-best 11 three-pointers. Steph's 54 points were the most by a Warrior since 1984. In the 2013 playoffs, Steph made his first postseason appearance, averaging 23 points, 8 assists, and 4 rebounds across 12 games. He set a franchise record with 42 playoff three-pointers, pushing his total for the season to 314, the first player in NBA history to hit at least 300 threes in a season. He showed that he wasn't just a regular season player. The following season, Steph led the league in three-pointers for a second consecutive season with 261 becoming the first player since Ray Allen to lead in threes back-to-back. -back. He also earned his first All-Star appearance and was named to the All-NBA second team. In early December, Steph became the franchise leader in career three-pointers. Now, this is actually crazy considering that he only played for about five seasons with just a single postseason appearance and even played just over 20 games one season due to injury. He finished the season tied for second in the NBA with four triple-doubles, the most by a Warrior since Wilt Chamberlain in 1963-64. Despite a strong season, the Warriors were eliminated in the playoffs by the Clippers. The Dubs were now 40 years without a championship title to their name, and things needed to change. Before the 2014-15 season, the Warriors hired Steve Kerr as head coach, who brought significant changes, including a faster pace and more freedom for Steph to shoot. The Warriors finished with 67 wins, and Steph was named NBA MVP, averaging almost 24 points, 8 assists, and 2 steals per game. He broke his own record for 3-pointers in a season, too. In the playoffs, Steph continued to dominate. In Game 5 of the conference semifinals against the Grizzlies, he became the first player to hit 6 3-pointers and make 6 steals in a game. In Game 6, he made a playoff career-high 8 3-pointers. Curry broke the NBA record for most three-pointers in a single postseason during the conference finals against the Rockets. The Warriors then faced the Cavaliers in the finals. Despite a rocky start, Steph scored 37 points in Game 5 and helped secure the championship in Game 6, ending the series with averages of 26 points and 6.3 assists per game. The Warriors' title run was historic, with Steph eliminating all other All-NBA First Team selections on their way to the championship. It's not every day you see a guy drafted 7th overall in the NBA rise to the top and snatch the MVP award. In fact, Steph is the ninth lowest draft pick to win the MVP. Now, let's jump into the 2015-2016 season, a historic run for Steph. 
He started with a bang, scoring 118 points in the first three games, a feat not seen since Michael Jordan in 1989-90. The Dubs started the season 16-0, the first team ever to do that, and stretched it to 24-0 before the Bucks snapped their streak. By late December, Steph was on fire, recording his sixth career triple-double with 23 points, a career-high 14 rebounds, and 10 assists. Steph also became the first player to make 200 three-pointers in four straight seasons, and by the end of February, he surpassed Kyle Korver's 127 straight games with a three-pointer, making it 128. And his scoring spree continued with 51 points against the Magic and a thrilling game winner against the Thunder, tying the NBA record for 12 three-pointers in a game. March was more of the same. Steph became the first player to hit 300 regular season three-pointers. In fact, there have been only seven times that a player has scored 300 or more three-pointers in a season, and Steph had five of them. The Warriors were unstoppable that season, hitting 70 wins, and Steph became the first player to make 400 three-pointers in a season. There was no stopping this guy, and his season averages were off the charts. He was unanimously named MVP, the first ever to do so. Not even LeBron, Kobe, Shaq, MJ, Bird, and others could achieve that feat. Steph's scoring jump of 6.3 points from the previous season was the largest ever by a reigning MVP. Playoff time, and the Warriors were rolling. They knocked out the Rockets despite Steph missing time with an MCL injury. He returned to score 40 points off the bench against the Trailblazers, setting an NBA record with 17 points in overtime. The Warriors faced the Thunder in the conference finals, coming back from a 3-1 deficit to advance to their second straight finals. In the finals against the Cavs again, Steph's performance was a bit inconsistent, but he still set a record with 27 three-pointers. Despite being up 3-1, the Warriors lost in seven games, making them the first team in NBA Finals history to blow a 3-1 lead. So, no back-to-back -back titles for them, but Steph's impact on the game is undeniable. His scoring, his records, his milestones, they've all cemented his place as one of the greatest shooters and players in NBA history. He changed the way the game was played. You see, before Steph came in, there was three-point shooting, but it wasn't a major part of the game, as players believed in taking the ball into the area and scoring. Steph weaponized three-pointers, and teams started to approach the game differently. Defenders now don't need to wait for players to come because they can shoot anywhere. And the idea of putting a man on Steph was introduced as this was the only way to stop him to some extent. It can only be one man, Steph Curry. And through it all, he's remained humble, focused, and driven. His story is far from over, and the stats just keep piling up. Despite a mid-season ankle injury in the 2016-17 season, Steph returned strong, passing Jason Kidd for 8th place on the career 3-pointers list, and becoming the fastest to 2,000 3-pointers in just 597 games. He hit his 200th 3-pointer of the season for the 5th consecutive year. In the playoffs, he led the Warriors to the 3rd straight finals, sweeping the Spurs and setting an NBA record for a 12-0 start in the playoffs. In the finals against their nemesis, the Cavs, Steph and company wasn't going to blow another series lead. They clinched their second title in three years with Steph scoring 34 points in the decisive Game 5. They would again meet the Cavs in yet another final in 2018, which would be the first time that anything like that has happened in the NBA. In Game 2 of the NBA Finals, Steph went on a shooting spree, setting a finals record with nine three-pointers and racking up 33 points, leading the Warriors to a 122-103 victory over the Cavaliers. Then in Game 4, he was on fire again, dropping 37 points as the Warriors crushed the Cavs 108-85 to to clinch their second consecutive championship with a clean sweep. Some felt he got snubbed for the Finals MVP award. Steph brushed it off saying, At the end of the day, I'm not going to let a Finals MVP trophy define my career. Three titles. Wherever that puts us in the conversation in the history of the NBA, I'm a three-peat champ. That summer, Steph signed a five-year, $201 million extension, becoming the first player to sign a Supermax contract over $200 million. Steph continued to climb the scoring ranks, surpassing Paul Pierce for sixth place on the career three-point list and joining the 15,000-point club in Warriors history. The 2018-2019 season saw Steph moving up the ranks, passing Jason Terry for third place all-time in three-pointers made, and scoring his 16,000th career point. In the playoffs, he set a record for most postseason three-pointers, passing Ray Allen, and led the Warriors to their fifth straight finals. Despite a valiant effort, including a career-high 47 points in Game 3, the Warriors lost to the Raptors in six games. And it meant there was no three-peat for Steph and the Dubs. 
With Kevin Durant leaving as a free agent and Clay injured, Steph was expected to take on a greater offensive load for the 2019-20 season. However, in just the fourth game of the season, he suffered a significant setback. He collided with Aaron Baines of the Phoenix Suns, resulting in a broken second metacarpal in his left hand. He only played five games in total that season, which resulted in a poor outing for the Dubs overall. The following season, Steph joined Ray Allen and Reggie Miller as the only players to surpass 2,500 career three-pointers in NBA history. He later surpassed Reggie Miller for second place on the NBA's career three-pointers list, trailing only Ray Allen. And at this point, it was only a matter of time. He was toppling everyone on the records list. Even Wilt Chamberlain wasn't spared as Steph surpassed him to become the franchise's all-time scoring leader. Steph's scoring streak in April 2021 was particularly noteworthy as he scored at least 30 points in 11 consecutive games, breaking Kobe Bryant's record for a player aged 33 or older. He made 78 three-pointers during this stretch, the most in NBA history over 11 regular season games. He wasn't a baby anymore, but he was still an assassin. He also set an NBA record with 96 three-pointers in a month, surpassing James Harden's previous record. In November, during the 2021-2022 season, Steph became the NBA's career leader for three-pointers made in both the regular season and playoffs, surpassing Ray Allen with 3,366. And just one month later at Madison Square Garden against the New York Knicks, he made his 2,974th career three-pointer, passing Ray Allen to become the NBA's all-time three-point scoring leader. Steph suffered a sprained ligament in his left foot and was ruled out indefinitely, but he made a strong return in the playoffs. On May 9th in Game 4 of the Western Conference Semifinals against the Memphis Grizzlies, he became the first player in NBA history to make 500 career playoff three-pointers. After leading the Warriors to victory in five games in the Western Conference Finals against the Dallas Mavericks, Steph earned the inaugural Western Conference Finals MVP award. In Game 4 of the NBA Finals, Steph scored 43 points and grabbed 10 rebounds in a 107-97 win over the Boston Celtics, becoming the first player to make 5-plus threes in four consecutive Finals games and the second oldest player to record a 40-point, 10-rebound game in the Finals. In Game 5, he passed John Havlicek for 10th on the all-time Finals assist list. In Game 6, he led the Warriors to a 103-90 victory over the Celtics with 34 points, 7 rebounds, and 7 assists, earning the NBA Finals MVP unanimously with averages of 31 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists, and 2 steals per game. He claimed his fourth NBA title and cemented his place as a legend. The 2023-24 season saw Steph continue to make history. In early November 2023, he became the first player to make a three-pointer in 250 consecutive regular season games. He also became the first player to record at least 3,500 career three-pointers. He was named his 10th All-Star Game, and his clutch performance throughout the season earned him the 2023-24 NBA Clutch Player of the Year Award after leading the league in clutch points for the season. Even though the Dubs had an underwhelming season, Steph has certainly come a long way from his college days to become an NBA legend. And while it must have been disappointing to be rejected at that time, he can look back with pride that he is more than overachieved.